Hey everyone, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching the channel as always. We have a John Deere L120 uh, lawn tractor here today. Never had one of these before. I've had an L... I don't know if I've had an L series before. Uh, I've had a couple LAs and a couple of Ds. Uh, this one is running, driving, cutting. It needs a little help though. I got it in a trade deal for a yard machine rider. 42 inch rider that I sold uh, that I had to do that big transmission swap on twice uh, I got this on trade plus some cash uh, the main thing is you can probably see it in the video right here the front end is out of alignment that's every single one of these uh, and we've got some PTO wiring issues to resolve I already have kind of worked on a little bit of the uh, starting issue there was a bunch of corrosion on the battery and so I put a different battery in it starting and running fine uh, blades are engaging and stuff so that's really good to see too uh, but I'll show you what we got to do to this so um, hope y'all enjoy this if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook let's get started so here it is it's really not in that bad a condition a lot of the times you see these things got rust everywhere on them uh, for because of the paint flying off we do have some of that obviously I can just spray a little bit of yellow on this we're not gonna be uh, stripping all the paint and redoing this thing it's a Lowe's John Deere so uh, or Home Depot whatever uh, 22 horsepower Briggs on it V twin runs good uh, I have so things I've already done behind y'all's back had to clean all the corrosion and stuff off of the battery here there was like a mountain of corrosion and also the issue was I and mean, it was on both terminals the battery was done it had corroded through the um, starter terminal too and so uh, I had to replace this cable I kept the old cable end because you had to attach this to the fuse so got a couple cable ends on it works just fine though a little bit underpowered battery, 190 cold cranking amps. That's really the only one I have around here right now. They will put a bigger one in it when it is time. You see it's got a bunch of little oil drips and leaks and stuff in here. I'll show you that it runs. We've got 380, 51 hours on it, so not too bad. Uh, would like to see a little bit less, but it's really not too bad. Remember that 125 that time? It had over 800 hours on it. We're doing better on this one. You see it's running good. Gotta fix the front end. That's pretty. Hopefully, that's gonna be fairly easy to do. I have to. I have a trick for that. One of the wheels. I believe this one needs bearings. I have a whole new wheel, or I have a whole wheel in the back door that came. Out, that's off of Murray. Maybe that'll work. Otherwise, I'll just change the bearings out. This thing idles down and everything. So I mean, you got cruise control. 12 volt outlet down there you don't really see that much especially on a mower from about 2005 or 6 i do have the covers for the side height adjustment blades belts are fairly new from what he told me and from visual inspection pto works but here's the thing with the wire i'll stop it so you can hear me so it needs some wiring work you can see a couple of the wires are pretty stripped here from, looks like they probably got shredded at some point so we just need to tuck that up make it look pretty and get rid of all this uh, nonsense right here bare wire and stuff and this PTO will be just fine again so that's kind of the order of operations here um, shouldn't be too long here let me find a, some bearings for this we'll change out the bearings we'll fix this wiring clean it up put the little uh, covers back on it and maybe spruce up a little bit of this green here that's uh flaked off and 
think we'll be done. All right, guys. So we're gonna look at this now. Like a guy almost looks like you put some new tires on it recently too. But a lot of times with these, the spindle here for the steering is what wears along with this drive link or the um, drag link. Excuse me. So you can see when I'm moving this. Just like a combination of a bunch of different factors moving back and forth, uh, including the uh, steering gear. Uh, I think you can see that maybe behind the PTO. What I like to do a lot of times is take and these tabs here where the drive links are. I do this on Craftsman mowers too. Uh, <clears throat> it's like a half inch and a seven sixteenths to take it off or something along those lines. Take the drag link off, I'll take this tab right here and bend it downward. What that does is it uh, shortens the amount of travel that the drag link has to get. Actually it lengthens it I think because you want it to go like that. Either way what it does is it causes the toe to go in a little bit so that it's gonna have some wear so whenever I do back it up, the wheels will still face inward a little bit, but when you go forward, which is the most important, the wheels will be straight. It's just kind of a easy way to compensate, uh, a cheap and easy way to compensate, so to speak. And it wasn't helped by the bearings in this wheel. So what I'm going to do, take that drag link off, I'll bend that tab down. I'll see if I can show it to y'all on camera what I did, or at least how I did it. And then we'll take care of the bearings in these wheels next. I'm in the process of changing the bearings out, the ones on the left tire seem like they're okay. So we're not going to have to worry about them. The ones on the right, though, are shot. I don't know where. Uh, that's the good side. I don't know where the bad side went in my periphery but they are here somewhere all i'm doing i'll show you for one of these here's the bad side on this one these are the these are not the um ball bearing bearings these are just uh like the inner and the outer here you can see that they should fit on this hopefully yeah so they, they'll hopefully fit if not, we'll make them fit, I guess. But, uh, so they've got those type bearings on it. And I'm just pushing them out with a pry bar and a hammer. And all I gotta do, I'll show you real quick what I'm doing. We might have to wire brush the spindle to get these bearings on we'll get them on nonetheless we're just getting in here grab a decent decent hammer and you'll feel it on the collar we're just gonna give it a few hits and it'll eventually pop out Of course, the one that I'm going to show y'all is not going to, but <laughs> this always happens, doesn't it? Either way, that's how I pop the other three out. Then we just take it and pop it on to the spindle like so and you're done so let me let's get that taken care of and I'll be right back with y'all I think this is a little bit better a lot less play than what we had the other side it's okay got a little bit more wear but it wasn't wearing out near like the right one that bearing I couldn't get off I took a 20 or 15 16 socket that got it out, just hit it out with a couple of hits of the hammer. We're going to grease up the front end. And in terms of the front end also, the tab, I bent down here on this side a little bit. 
So we're going to drive around and see if that helps it things as well. The next thing is just going to be tackling this PTO wiring. And hopefully after that, we'll be ready to rock and roll when it comes to uh, finishing this thing up, cleaning it up, touching up the paint a little bit, and getting it out of here. So working on the front end, I did bend the tabs down some. Tried to hit the, hit the spindle tabs out a little bit. I don't want to work on them anymore because I don't want to weaken them any more than they already are. Uh, just by doing that. Because they're already weak as they are. It's just this is terrible steering design. Craftsmen, the newer Craftsmen are the same way though. So anyways, what we're doing now is, what you do is you take, I'm going to take the right drag link off and I'm going to try and bend it and help shorten it a little bit. We'll see if that works. If not, we'll uh, we'll keep trying things. So there's a five eight. The best thing to do is actually reach up under here and get the nut on the uh, drag link. You have it at full lock to the right, and if you want to get it off the right side, then you got the 13 millimeter or half inch down on the bottom, and you lock it down on the other side of the drag link, and then you just drop it, take it off, and shorten it. It's about to come off, hopefully. Gracious. The nut is off. I just can't get it off. There we go. So we'll get it off the other side now. And I'll find something tough, almost like my trailer hitch on my truck or something, to wedge it up against and then try and pull that steel bar out to see if we can get it a little bit shorter. Everything on the front end is worn. This mower doesn't warrant me buying all new front end parts, which would be hundreds of dollars. So we're trying to make it so that it tracks straight. That's the goal. We want it to track straight. Now it's just a little bit out and you can feel it. And we're going to be wearing out bearings and stuff really quickly if we don't address it. So let me get the rest of this off. I'll show you if it's light enough what I ended up doing to get it bent, hopefully. And then we'll be right back out of here in just a minute. Alright guys, so that drag link, link trick actually worked. I got it running. I just wanted to show y'all. Back it down a little bit. So this is going forward. Now we're going to go backwards now. Let me take the part brake off. So if you go backwards, you might notice that there's a little bit of a toe in. I don't know how well it may show up on camera from this point of view. And when you go forward, it actually straightens out. So it's not hard to turn anymore and nothing along those lines. So let me shut it down for a second. I'm going to clean up for the night. Ooh, hello. Well, what I did, and I'll show you the PTO wiring while I'm at it. It's not the most dressed up thing in the world, but it's out of the way. All the butt connectors are good on it and it's not fraying or really in the way of anything. So that's, that's a positive. Uh, I don't know who messed with the wiring on this thing, but either way, um, 
that's back together. We've got the alignment good enough. Again, the front end is worn. The only way you're going to fix that is if you put new spindles on the front, drag links, and replace the little steering semicircle and bolt because that's wobbly too. Not justifiable on this. We got it riding straight though, and that's really what matters. If you look right here, you can see that there is, uh, it's uh, about as straight as I'm going to get it. In terms of the drag link, I took it off. It's a 5 8 on the bottom and a 13 millimeter or half inch on the top. I did bend these tabs down a little bit to help give me a little bit of uh, room slash clearance. Uh, either way, this is a little bit worn, so as long as you don't abuse it, it should last a decent little while. And then the bottom one down there, that's a 5 8 on the top. Turn it full lock. Put the 5 8 socket underneath because you can get under it with your hand and you can feel where that bolt or that uh, nut is on the top. You can fasten that in, get you an extension about like this, and you can get, you can pop the extension into the socket and use a 3 8 inch ratchet to get it off. Then you take a 13 millimeter on the bottom and you just ratchet it off. What I did is I took it, took this whole drag link assembly out to my truck. Wedged it underneath the trailer hitch. I don't know if I can show y'all. Yeah. Y'all can look at my tax records online. See my license plates and stuff, so I don't really care about all that. But So I got it on this trailer hitch right here in that little eyelet. Uh, the end that's closest to the wheel, I put through it. And then just lift, literally just lift it up on it. Like lifted, like I was going to try and lift the truck up. And that was able that I was able to bend it enough in order to get it to where it would uh, work properly uh, to get it aligned enough. It doesn't need much. It may only need to have been bent about a half inch or so. But as you can see, we drove it in the garage, and the alignment is pretty straight. We were we were kind of cocked out on the right side a little bit. That's why it was hard steering. That's why it wore out the bearings on the right front. So very common with these, especially the 120s, which have a little bit heavier of a presence and the bigger front wheels, pretty typical. I'm going to clean up for the night tomorrow. Uh, really, all that's left to do, I don't know if we have to do blades or anything. Got to do just a service oil change. Blades do need sharpened, it looks like. So we'll sharpen the blades on it and... Uh, put the little covers back on it. Give it a nice wash. I do want to paint a couple of the areas here in the front just to kind of get, just to kind of make it look better. John Deere yellow, John Deere green. I don't have any John Deere green around here, so I'm going to have to go buy some. But get this thing listed and get it out of here, hopefully. Uh, going to be a good mower now that I got the alignment fixed and the PTO wiring sorted out. Uh, those are relatively easy fixes, thankfully. I'll stop talking. I do need to put a uh, put some ATF in the right rear because it does go down after about two or three days. I'm going to do all that tomorrow. It's too late at night, and I'll catch you then. All right, guys, I got all the deck and stuff off of it again. It's just like five mounting points and clips, and it drops right down. Nothing crazy. Leveled the deck as well. The deck is over there. I got the foot wells and stuff off it. I'm just going to touch up the paint with some John Deere green. That stuff was $15 at Tractor Supply, so we'll be diligent as to how much we use. But just to get them foot wells kind of dressed up, nothing crazy. You put the gas cap back on. I put some you know, yellow jacket friend right there. Put a gas cap or put some gas in it. It was a little bit hard to start, and it was knocked the battery down pretty quickly. So, uh, I got it running with a jump box, and then I found out that the voltage regulator doesn't look like it's operating. Remember, I have told y'all I had to replace this positive battery cable and all that stuff. I have checked. I have continuity from the positive terminal of the battery down to the output terminal of the voltage regulator. There's zero ohms. I have ground because there's no ohms between the ground bolt for this voltage regulator and the negative terminal of the battery. I tested the coil or stator at the back terminal of this wire right here 
up to the positive terminal and I had 14 and some change volts so I know that the output of the uh, stator is good but when it comes through here it only outputs like 4 volts between this and the positive terminal of the battery so I'm thinking that the voltage regulator inside is bad part numbers right here on the side they're only like 10 to 15 dollars totally worth it to do on this um, obviously um, we need it because of an electric PTO so uh, I haven't had this thing running very long either with the PTO on so I know that we need something and I'm pretty sure it's the rate regulator it's 20 years old it could probably stand replaced anyways uh, deck is mostly clean I'm about to hit this with spray paint as well uh, to take off the belt it's just the spring right here you have to come call it or have it come loose and I'll be fighting to the grave on trying to get this deck 100% right so I did some wire brush action and just kind of skirted the high points and got it to where it is like this and hopefully that'll at least help stop the paint from flaking off some I am going to paint this paint touch up this area with yellow just so that it doesn't look quite as ugly. Get a voltage regulator ordered and put that on. I'll show you the result after I put everything back together. We'll get the voltage regulator on. I'll show you that it's charging and then we will uh, be ready to rock and roll. Let this thing go on to a new home. Alright, so here's the finished product, so to speak. Um, that is not John Deere yellow. It's like some Krylon and it doesn't morph as well. This is only one coat of that John Deere green here. And man, did it work really, really well. Good coverage. It's not gonna be perfect because you're gonna see a little bit of peel where it was peeling, but much better than it looked. So never gonna, I mean, you're gonna be fighting a losing battle with these. Anyways, when it comes to uh, paint and whatnot. So I just did it, got it to where Spruce it up, make it look good. Hopefully it lasts a little bit longer, look a little bit better for the customer who buys this. So I put some ATF in this tire. It seems like it's holding okay. Might ride it around a little bit more. I think I'm going to let y'all ride around, do a final look. Probably not going to wait to end this video just for a voltage regulator because I'm about 95% positive that's what it is because uh, everything else is working fine. It's got continuity all the way up to the battery got 14 volts coming out of the stator and it drops to five coming out of the voltage voltage regulator uh, it's got good ground because there's no uh, there's uh, continuity between the negative terminal of the battery and the grounding volt of the stator or of the voltage regulator so get one of them 15 bucks I do that off camera after this video is filmed because I'm getting kind of close on videos. I need to get some stuff out for y'all. Alright guys, so before we wrap this up, I want to show you the whole voltage regulator thing. Um, I'll show you that there's not, or that it's just battery voltage at the battery. And then we'll take off the leads and I'll show you um, output voltage of the stator and then show you uh, the output voltage of the regulator going to the battery all right so let's dive in I won't talk while we do this but
for it, that wire, the output wire. regulator. Want to idle it down so we're at AC volts now. We got 16. You idle, or bring it up. And so that regulator just changes it. And then Go back to DC voltage. I can show you that one side has got some. And then it goes to 14.6 at full throttle, so. I think, uh, I think we're gonna put a regulator on this. But in the meantime, while I have enough battery voltage, I'll take y'all out for a spin. You can see it actually turned out pretty nice with all the paint and stuff. As you can see, just gotta get that regulator on and we'll be ready to rock and roll on this thing. Got the deck level and everything too. Oops, they running. No one. I can't run it for too long because and it steers easier now. Maybe I can show you when we go backwards here and turn it. You, oh, you can kind of see it right there. See that there's some toe in. I'd rather have toe in in reverse than toe out going forward because you're going to be going forward 90% of the time. We're not going to get rid of that unless we spend the hundreds of dollars in parts. All right. Then the reverse. Much better honestly out of a mower take it for a spin the steering wheel is not a hundred percent aligned probably from where I bent bent them drag links but before he, before I fixed the steering on it I would not have been able to turn it with one hand it was all of two hands to get this thing turning so that's the goal get it to be easy to steer easy to use not wearing out bearings. Yes, it is towed in a little bit when you back up, but it's running straight like what needs to. All right. Let's wrap this video up. See if it pops when it turns off. Nope. There it is, guys. Everything's done on it. Might go ahead and take pictures. That way, all I got to do is slap the voltage regulator on it, test it. Uh, if I didn't test it right, please let me know, but the way that I figured is that I have um, the alternating current is within range. I know it's supposed to be in the 30s. Um, I've got output voltage, like DC voltage on the, uh, I guess it's the output wire of the stator that goes directly correlated to the engine uh, speed. Uh, and at full throttle it's showing like 14 and some change so that's right and the output voltage I got like five out of the out of it uh, when I was uh, checking earlier and obviously at the wire at the output wire coming to the battery so we need we um, 
I guess we pretty much eliminated all the other stuff in between. We still had uh, just battery voltage. We should have had higher voltage if there was a wiring issue or a fuse issue or something along those lines. So, we'll do that after the fact here. Got to get this video out because I'm starting to run low on videos. Uh, usually I'm a month or so ahead. I'm only about a week ahead right now. So, hope y'all enjoyed this. Remember, I was, the story behind this, I sold that 42-inch yard machines that I swapped the transmission on. Uh, gave them a $150 discount. We had bad corrosion on the battery, um, you know, paint flaking off and stuff, you know, the typical John Deere stuff. Front end, fixed front end, uh, put a new battery in it, cleaned up all the terminals, touched up the deck, sharpened the blades, uh, ATF in the right rear tire, and that's pretty much it on this one. Pretty easy, all things considered. Once we got everything lined up in the front to where it's straight going forward. So thank you all again for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you all see that I didn't do correctly, feel free to point it out. I'm always trying to learn. So uh, this probably is going to yield, I don't know. Uh, it's not going to leave for less than $800. I know that. I'll probably list it for $950. Keep it under the $1,000 range to get it out. Because uh, really these L series aren't really worth more than that. Uh, even in really good condition. This one's in good condition. Um, but we'll see. Thank you all again for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll catch y'all in the next video. See you then.